Hey everyone, my name is Sahil and in today's video, we will learn about the concept of step and touch potential for lightning protection as per the international standard IEC 62305 part 3. By the end of this video, you will fully understand what step and touch potential are in electrical terms, the importance of potential control in the case of structures and how to reduce risk caused by touch and step potential. Let's start by first understanding the basics. To understand step and touch potential, you first need to know how electrical energy moves through conductive objects. Let's say a utility pole breaks or an overhead conductor falls. In these situations, metal fences, wet soil and puddles can quickly channel the electrical current to the ground. Even objects we usually think of as poor conductors like trees or wooden fences can conduct electricity especially when they are wet. So what happens if an energized wire falls onto a chain link fence or directly into the ground? The object and its surrounding area will become electrically charged creating a high voltage zone. However, the actual voltage level depends on a lot of factors such as the electrical potential, the object's resistance and soil conditions including material and moisture levels. If a person or animal accidentally comes into contact with this high voltage zone, the result could be fatal or cause severe injuries. This brings us to the concept of ground potential gradient. It explains how voltage dissipates from a grounded object or from the grounded end of an energized object. The voltage drops that occur during this dissipation are called ground potentials. A common example for describing this scenario is of a stone dropped in a pond. The stone creates ripples that eventually fade as they move from the center. Voltage is highest at the source and fades as the energy moves across the ground. Finally, coming towards touch and step potential. Let's understand step potential deeper first. Imagine a scenario where current flows from an overhead conductor through a chain link fence or when an overhead conductor touches the ground. This creates a high voltage condition. The soil's resistivity then causes a voltage gradient, leading to a voltage difference between two points at the ground. This is what we refer to as step potential. It's called step because this voltage difference can occur between your feet as you walk near the energized area. This difference can cause the electrical current to enter and surge through your body, which is fatal and can even cause serious injuries. Now let's discuss touch potential. This term describes the voltage difference between any two points on your body. It could be hand to hand, shoulder to back, or even hand to foot. For instance, if an overhead conductor falls onto a metal fence and you touch that fence, an electrical current will flow from the energized fence through you and into the ground. That voltage difference you experience is the touch potential. Here, the electrical current flowing through the fence will enter your body through your hand and leave through your feet, which again can cause serious injuries or even death. Now, let's understand the importance of potential control in the case of structures. Imagine a densely populated area close to an electrical structure that needs protection. To keep people safe, you will implement potential control measures. How do you know if these measures are enough? The answer lies in the resistance gradient on the Earth's surface in the area requiring protection. If this gradient is not more than 1 ohm per meter, then you've got adequate potential control. To make this happen, Engineers install a ring earth electrode one meter away from the structure and half a meter deep. This becomes the first ring in your potential control system, especially if the structure already has an existing earth termination system in the form of another ring earth electrode. Here is a table that outlines the number of rings needed based on distance. If the structure has potential control, the down conductors must be linked to all control rings. So, how do we reduce the risk caused due to touch and step potential? Start by conducting a comprehensive rise of earth potential study to identify the hazards. For a deep dive into how this study works, check out our blog. 
The link is in the description. After identifying the risk, an electrical engineer can take several steps to minimize step and touch potential hazards. Here's how it can be done. First, cover the down conductor with insulating material. We recommend using at least 3 mm of cross-linked polyethylene capable of withstanding an impulse voltage of 100 kV. While you can adjust the down conductor's position, altering it is not recommended. Secondly, make sure the flow layer's contact resistance within a 3 meter radius around the down conductors is at least 100 kilo ohms. Thirdly, note that adding a 5 cm thick layer of insulating material such as asphalt or a 15 cm layer of gravel can significantly reduce the risk to a tolerable level as per the IC62305 Part 3 guidelines. Lastly, employ potential control to compress the mesh network of the earth termination system. This further helps in mitigating the touch voltage risks. However, the challenge lies in know how to effectively apply combine and organize these measures into a reliable earthing solution. The aim here is to control surface voltages so that they remain within safe limits for the human heart. This can only be done by an authorized engineer. At Axis, we have a team of 40 plus engineers who are here to help you in designing, installing and testing your earthing systems. Our products have been used in substations, data centers, factories and even in everyday residential and commercial buildings. Before you move on to another video, remember that nothing can compensate for inadequate insulation. Watch this video to learn about the correct insulation procedure for earthing.